Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of RC Cars That Rocked. So, this year we're back in 2010. Uh, this is the car that we're going to be looking at today in RC Cars That Rocked. And uh, obviously it's my car. Um, here she is. Here is the Tamiya TRF 201X. So first of all, the year 2010. Now 2010 was a, a very important year for me, very life-changing year. Um, I joined Tamiya after 10 years of being with Team Associated, so that was all exciting and new. Um, I won a few races, which I'm going to talk about, and uh, I also got married in the same year. So a lot of things happened and a lot of things that changed my life and my path. Um, so yeah, back I was with Associated for about 10 years driving their cars, as I mentioned in my B44 video you can check out. Um, so it was a big change for me. It was I got to a point with uh, Associated where I thought I couldn't really go any further, especially as there was other good drivers in the team. Um, so if I wanted to pursue a career in RC, I, feel, I felt that I had to need to change team. And TRF was one of the teams I wanted to go to. It was um, a very strong team, but very niche at the same time. They didn't really sell too many cars, especially over here. Um, they had a small number of drivers, but they had basically the best of the best. Uh, they have their, their super strong touring car team, which was you know Mark Reinhardt, Victor Wilk, uh, Yeelys Grosskamp. They're all awesome, top of the range drivers. And then in off-road, in the previous years, they'd had Hoopo, rocking their full drive car but they didn't have a two drive um so when i joined they still didn't have a two drive but in march of that 2010 year this turned up on my door i knew it was coming i didn't know how quick it was going to be it was actually quicker than i expected um and here she is it arrived uh, i built the car the first thing i thought is very much like my b4 that i'd been driving so um i pretty much knew what to do uh, and then, uh, yeah, we started the, the year. The first race I went to was the Cactus Classic uh, with the car, which was in um, yeah in Arizona, a, a race I really missed. And I think I put it BQ, I think I qualified B, B1, so just missed out on the main. remember ha having some slipper issues and stuff, just not kind of getting it right. And um, But still a pretty good debut for the car. Uh, and then we went into the National Series, um, and in the national series, I'd never won a two-wheel drive national. I'd won a lot of four-wheel drive nationals and national championships. I'd never actually won a two-wheel drive national for one reason or another. And um, over the past years, the mid-motor cars had become super strong. As you can see today, we don't see rear motor cars anymore. So it was very hard to win a two-wheel drive national when you didn't have a mid-motor car. And then first national of the year, I went to Tallywain with this which I'd been testing on my, my own track, which I had at the time. And uh, we went and we won the first round. So already a fantastic start to the year. I won the, uh, the first two-wheel drive national round and uh, on the debut of the car. So I carried that momentum through the season, but we always knew it was going to be a little bit of a struggle on UK soil because of the high by Astro conditions. If it ever rained, we were good. If not, it was always a little bit difficult. Um, we ended that national year tying for the championship win, but losing on countback um, to two mid mo cars. So there we go. It was still a good showing in the national series for the car. Uh, but the main thing that we were aiming at was European glory. Uh, it was We were billing ourselves towards that. I knew if I put in the work, I could have a good chance. I'd finished on the podium multiple years in the past, uh, as you saw with the B44 one. So... It was about time that I tried to step it up and uh, we did some running at the track, did the warm up and such and the car was good, uh, tweaked the setup and then we went to the European Championship where we hoped to lay it down and this was the car that I used, this is the exact car, built for the event and uh, yeah, luckily, or not luckily, but I managed to TQ and win. Uh, I TQ'd every round that was available, so basically, it, yeah, sunshine on it now, so basically, um, a few of the rounds were rained off, rain affected, 
but the rounds we did do I think is three and then the first two legs of the finals I won them all so this car was never actually beaten maybe in a few practice runs or something but that doesn't count so yeah this car was never actually beaten on track and here she is so I'm going to I'm going to show it to you today for the right-handed hairpin just one more lap stands between Lee Martin and the European Championships just got to keep it the right side up now through the whoops heading towards the tabletop which he's made a couple of mistakes at oh my goodness me that was super super safe there but he knows he's got plenty of breathing space he's got well almost half a lap between himself and the rest of the field and he comes through to win this heat and the european championship it's lee martins to take home so we're going to look over her we'll keep the body on for now in fact, we'll take the body off and we'll do the sticker run because we like that. But I'll show you the body on the car. I mean, the first thing you can see, it's definitely not a uh, cab forward body like we have today. It's pretty wide. Old traditional rear motor two-wheel drive looking body. Got a bit of cool in there for the, the speed controller and stuff in the right places. I like that. So let's take this body off and let's review the body show because that gives us a good insight what stickers and stuff we used to the sponsors we had at the time. So obviously the big one is Tamiya, TRF. Um, Say so it was an honour to join that team. It, it's like an elusive team that you never really get a chance to, to join. And I got the chance, thanks to Mark Reinhard, really um, helping me out and pushing me through the door. And uh, yeah, it was just a really, really good experience just to have that Tamiya blue, really. I mean, why else wouldn't you? But as we look down the side, Rude Bits. Rude Bits were uh, a, a big thing back then for me. Uh, Tony Evoca. I actually got him back into RC after he retired and then he uh, teamed up with Dave Burton to make parts for the cars. It was more brass, like heavy parts, and I'll show you some of this on there in a minute. MK Racing, again, my friend's hobby shop, same as the other day when I, I spoke about on the B44. Kifo Paint, body painter extraordinaire back then. I mean, it's a nice looking body. They've definitely got um, more stylish these days, but back then that was considered like the bee's knees. Speed Passion. They were uh, a good one, long time sponsor back then. I'll show you the speed controller in the car in a minute. TFR, Turd Ferguson Racing, just a friend. He made uh, he made a few option parts and stuff, but he's in America, a very good friend of mine. Uh, it was great to support him. Fast Tracks, accessory brand um, from CML Racing in the UK. Obviously, I'd moved on from Associated, but I still had a few links with them. And then I think it's a Ghost RC sticker, a little ghost there, like a Pac Man ghost thing. Um, I think they did bearings. I'm not 100% sure. I think so. And then on the wing here, we have some more rude bits and uh, an answer RC one who are helping me out with a few accessories here and there. So that's the body shot done. Oh, got to talk about the bod scoop, haven't we? Bod scoop, more steering. Um, back then, we didn't really have anywhere to mount them. You could put them on the tower, um, but I found them effective if you just stuck them on the front of the body. A bit rudimental with the old sticky tape there, but it worked. Going over there. Here we go then. Always one of the nicest cars to look at is a Tamiya TRF car, and this one is no different. Oh, look at her. There she is. There she is. That makes me really miss mid motor cars. I really love driving mid, uh, mid motor, rear motor cars. I really love driving rear motor cars. And just looking at them on the table, they look like a finished article. It's, it's very nice to see again, actually. Um, I'm just picking this up and looking at it again as I'm filming. It, it's it makes the most sense it's, to me. It's, it's more honest and natural. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look at all the... I mean, first thing, again, like I said, TRF Blue has laden through the car. Beautiful in there. Let's work at the front and work our way back. So the arms, again, quite thin compared to today's stuff, but they were pretty strong, the TRF arms. You didn't break too many. They had a good amount of flex. Um, I don't want to flex it too much. I don't want to hurt it. Uh, the hubs are very, very small. See there, not really much adjustment and a very small hub, but it did the job. Um, front top plate, very nice and smooth. Tammy did a nice job of this with the steering arrangement on a separate screw and you can actually uh, take the front off without losing all the steering parts. That was very nice. Uh, moving back, it's traditional kind of B4 arrangement in the front end. Um, servo, we'll talk about electrics after. So under the servo, you can see a very nice shiny plate. Look, might be able to see yourself if you're lucky. 
So that's the Rubit brass weight for under the servo for this car. And they had it chrome plated just for me for this European Championship. There's also one all the way under the LiPo, but I'm not going to take it out so you can't really see it. Um, and then they made also these little chrome plated stars, thumb screw stars for me, so, you know, to go with the two Tamiya stars. Why, why wouldn't you? Um, this is a nice touch Tamiya thought of. Just a little clip to, to hold the servo wire so it wasn't all over the place, which is nice. Nice to see that little touch. Just holding it, the chassis feels so smooth and nice compared to uh, today's like steel chassis cars. Just, I don't know, it's just got a nice feeling in your hand. It kind of fits perfect, look. Just, unless you've got small hands. Jeremy Beadle style. Um, but yeah, moving back. Stick pack in, down the middle, what we always kind of run towards the end of the rear motor life. People were using shorty packs and messing about with speed arrangements and putting them down the center of the car, but this is a traditional layout. Moving back, shock tower was something you could break on this car. It's quite long and, you know, scaffoldy, bit of holes in there. And if you took a hard hit on the back, you could break shock tower. And it was a bit of a pain in the ass because if you didn't have a speed passion motor, which I'll show you in a minute, you had to unsolder it to get all the wires out of the way and change the tower. So shocks, small bore, back to the 10 mil bore, like the old cars had. Tamiya shocks were always awesome, super smooth, really nice coating on the on the bodies. Shock caps were great. I mean, they're always a good shock. Always a very uh, a very nice shock from Tamiya. Um, ball diff, obviously. We have some real nice one degree towing blocks back here. Track didn't have the most amount of grip, especially on these big bow tie tires. They normally give good forward traction, but side bike can be a bit meh. So coming out of the turns, the extra towing would definitely help. Um, so again, some nice blue, heat sunk motor plate. Nice nice looking rear end, really. Nice looking rear end. There's a Tamiya wing on there. I wasn't doing any wings at this stage. One thing I do notice is the pins into the uh, into the outdrives are really small. I don't know if we'd snap them today with all the power we have, not on dirt, obviously, but on carpet, but really nice small pin. wonder why we all move to the massive pins. So there, that's that's basically the car. One thing also is the wheels. I balance them, which is good for me. Normally I, I, I don't bother too much with the balancing of wheels, but I've also cut the, the webbing out of the wheels, make a bit more flex into the wheel itself and gives a bit more bit more traction. So there you go, that's, that's the car. Let's talk about the electronics. So electronics, front to back, servo, still a Sanwar. Um, yeah, always been good, always been a, a very, very strong servo. Speed Passion, as I mentioned, the Speed Passion GT 2.0 speed controller was, just back in the day, one of the best things you could buy. I remember getting it for the first time as a prototype in England, I think it was 2009, and everyone thought, why have you left Novak it was, why have you left Novak? Of course, we did the V44 thing. Why have you left Novak for this brand no one's heard of called Speed Passion? But again, my friend Mark Reinhardt had been using it in touring car. He said it was good. If it's good in touring car, it's normally pretty good in off-road. So uh, I tried it and it was super smooth and super consistent. And uh, we knew we were on to a winner. And then from being like the first guy using it to like 50% of the drivers in England using it at one point, it was really, you know, impressive. So that was that. Again, back then we didn't really change too many settings. You did in touring car, but for me in off-road, I still like put it in and just went. <laughs> much to the amusement of uh, the touring car guys but there we go speed power lipo which was a speed passion product ties in nicely with the blue samwa receiver obviously using the samwa radio mrt transponder always my uh, my pick for transponders and then the cool speed passion motor you see it's, it's got plugs rather than solder joints so if you wanted to do a quick change of a motor you just pull the plug out you put a different motor in and you put the plug in one thing you did have to make sure though is you kept pinching the plugs because they would start to get loose. Uh, I think it happened to Yawn at a World Championship that lost him the win basically because the plug got loose and uh, when it gets loose it creates resistance and then um, it unsolders itself. So yep there you go there's the car there's everything let's check the underside super smooth super nice old school design not a massive amount of adjustment on the arms and stuff um, you know, it holds in the arms are two, but you can't really change the, the C and D plate back here. 
you can't really change the towing or the pin height. You can, but you kind of had to add washers. So it wasn't ideal. You'd normally just change the anti-squat one because it was easier to get to and it had movement. Um, but there she is. My teammates. Teammates. We forgot to talk about teammates. Teammates at the time. As I mentioned, Mark Reinhardt. Victor Wilk was there. Um, Tony Reinhardt was there for support. And Pumpy. Pumpy was there. One of the you know first times of meeting Pumpy. And he was always with Mark. Really helping Mark out. Making sure everything was spot on. And he's still there today. Very supportive. Um, and yeah. Tony back then was building diffs. And, and hanging out at the edge of the table. And it all seemed so new and fresh. These guys now have been friends with him for over 10 years. And um, yeah, back then it was all, it was just really nice atmosphere. I felt like I was part of something professional. I felt like everyone supported each other um, and they really pushed each other on to, to be the best they could be, which was awesome. There was no real amnesty, like no one was upset if someone else won. It was great. Really, really great. Uh, one thing I will point out, no wheel nuts in the front. Remember them days? Just a screw. So you had a two mil screw that went in, no wheel nut. Bearings pushed into the wheels. They didn't actually stay on the car. Yeah, pretty cool. Obviously a bit of a pain in the ass too. Easy to change bearings though if they broke. So yeah, that's it teammates. Everything done, I think, covered. TRF, 201, two-wheel drive car. There she is. Still works. Still got good suspension. Shocks still feel good to this day. And... um yeah, European Championship winning car. I mentioned 2010 was a big year for me. It was after winning those European Championships. Um, again, with the other, with a four-wheel drive car, I'll show you later. But that paved the way for me to become a, an RC professional. Um, and a lot, a lot else happened in that year, but I think I'll talk about it in the four-wheel drive one. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell us what you thought of the video, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, maybe don't tell us because it will upset me. Um, Press the bell icon to get notifications when I post a new video and I hope you're all staying safe and having a good time. Thanks for watching, I'm Lee Martin. This has been RC Cars That Rocked.